Welcome back to the Top Notch Documentaries YouTube channel. The FBI has been successful in finding fugitives over the years. Many are captured in the United States or abroad and most are apprehended based on public tips and information. However, some fugitives remain undetected and free, whilst families of their victims suffer and await the news that an arrest has finally been made. The disappearance of 23-year-old Sandy Lee from Charlotte, North Carolina on August 9th of 2016 would spawn a large search by police as the circumstances surrounding her disappearance were highly suspicious. The case would quickly escalate in the following week as answers began to emerge, with the prime suspect eventually being added to the FBI's top 10 most wanted list. This is the story of Alejandro Rosales Castillo. I hope you enjoy. Sandy Lee had left her home on August 9th of 2016 and hadn't returned home or attempted to make contact with her family. Having been described as a trusting and friendly person, this behaviour was deemed uncharacteristic by her family and they became concerned for her safety. Sandy had arrived in the United States following the death of her mother as a youngster. America provided a better life for Sandy and her relatives. Unfortunately, that better life would come with a cost. Sandy had been working at Showmars, a Charlotte, North Carolina restaurant chain, and worked alongside 17-year-old Alejandro Castillo and 19-year-old Amia Fista. Alejandro, or Alex as he was more commonly referred to as, dated Sandy for a short time, and now Alejandro was dating his other co-worker, Amia Fista. Sandy would be reported missing by her family on August 10th and shortly thereafter both Alejandro and Amia would be reported missing by their families on August 11th and August 12th respectively. Police immediately noticed the missing persons case's connections and became suspicious once they learned about the trio and their relationships. Sandy's last known movements were retraced and it was learned that she was last seen at a quick trip convenience store in Charlotte. The case was beginning to look like an abduction and upon her family viewing her bank account, police became even more concerned when they heard that Sandy had withdrawn $1,000 from a nearby ATM following her last known whereabouts. Sandy's bank account now had a balance of zero. On August 17th, Sandy's body would be uncovered in a heavily wooded area outside the city. Police had tracked her cell phone to a tower near the woodland. She had been shot in the back of the head and her body had been discarded in a ravine. The crime was described as horrific, and it was clear that somebody had forced Sandy to withdraw money before driving her over to the woodland to take her life. But, just who would do this for a thousand dollars? Investigators would soon get their answer. It would emerge that Alejandro owed his former girlfriend money, and text messages exchanged between the two indicated that Alejandro had scheduled a meet-up so that he could repay Sandy. The meet-up destination was set for August 9th in Charlotte at the Quick Trip. On August 9th, Alejandro had been dropped off by his girlfriend at the Quick Trip. Investigators believed that upon meeting with Alejandro, Lee was made to withdraw money before being forcibly abducted and taken in her own car to the wooded area. Her life had been brutally snuffed out for a small amount of money and plenty of evidence had already accumulated that pointed toward Alejandro Castillo's guilt. Evidence also pointed toward an accomplice, Amia, who was looking like she had knowledge of Alejandro's intent. She had dropped him off in a distinct red Dodge Charger after all. Investigators learned more about Alejandro and he was born and raised in Charlotte and has family all over. They also realised that he didn't have a criminal history. That shocked many of them, considering the brutality of the crime. Investigators now realised why the other two Showmars employees were missing. They were on the run. A manhunt began as a new development in the case arrived that would move the case forward. Sandy's vehicle had been found abandoned on August 15th, not in Charlotte, North Carolina, but in Phoenix, Arizona. Amia's Red Dodge Charger had also been located, left in Charlotte. Police figured that Alejandro and Amia had taken Sandy's car and drove over 2,000 miles before dumping it at a bus shelter. Alejandro had family in Phoenix. The pair then moved south being seen on video crossing the US-Mexico border at Nogales on August 16th just after 9pm. Two months passed and Alejandro's girlfriend must have been sick of life in Mexico or fed up that Alejandro expectedly ditched her because she ended up turning herself in to Mexican authorities and was subsequently extradited back to North Carolina to face accessory charges. 
she began cooperating with investigators and said that they'd both stayed with his cousins in Aguas Calientes, Mexico, for two months before Alejandro suddenly went missing. Alejandro is fluent in Spanish, and so he could realistically be anywhere in Mexico, blending into society. His family ties have evidently aided in his time spent on the run, and he's considered armed and dangerous. His girlfriend, now in custody, ended up paying her hefty bonds for larceny of a motor vehicle and accessory after the fact, and was freed from the county jail in early 2017. Another person was arrested in March 2017 for accessory, and both are fully cooperating with the case. The FBI speculate that he could be hiding out in the Mexican state of Aguas Calientes, and that he may have travelled to the city of Guanajuato or the Mexican state of Veracruz. All law enforcement agencies are working together to bring Alejandro Castillo to justice. The FBI are currently working with local law enforcement agencies in Mexico and are confident that he will be eventually captured and extradited to stand trial for the brutal slaying of Sandy Lee. The family of Sandy Lee deserved justice and Sandy didn't deserve to pass away in this cold manner. Hopefully this case can be resolved very soon. This has been the story of Alejandro Castillo. As always, thank you for watching.